Hello, I'm DB Velocity, and in this video, I'll be doing a full demo and review of the ETIT Matrix Mixer. I will give several examples as we break down or build the patches to show how the sounds are achieved that make use of the Matrix Mixer to shed some possibilities that aren't always obvious. I'll first note that I'm not sponsored for this video and that I'm doing this as an effort to help a fellow Wiggler in support of the modular and DIY community, which has been an extensive resource for me. I have links included below for the ETIT Matrix Mixer. Should you be interested in doing this as a DIY or purchasing a pre-built module at 240 US dollars. And you can see here that I have two of them as it is readily available in a couple of flavors. One is a linear pot design which is aimed at general CV mixing duties and has unity gain. While the other is tailored for audio use with logarithmic pots and has a gain of 1.5, which is useful for boosting weaker signals. If you have any questions about the options or specific gain in mind, you can contact ETIT and you'll be sorted out for your specific needs. Of course, if you can swing it, both is a great option too. Both modules have jumpers on the back for each channel independently to provide DC coupling or removal of said jumpers to give AC coupling. At first glance, you might think of this as not exactly complex. Sure, it can mix audio and send signals to parallel sources in varying degrees, and if you've played with a modulation matrix on any other synthesizer before, then you know it can be quite powerful, and this is in the modular realm, where practically any signal can route to any destination. You get to attenuate the depth of signals for each send, and the inverted output is also available simultaneously. So with the basic building blocks of mix, multiply, attenuate, and invert on a 4x4 grid, the whole certainly becomes greater than the sum. So let's start with some basic examples and see what some possibilities are for a utility like this that can make a system go from basic to complex. Time to explore. This first patch is just a simple modulation mix where I use different LFO shapes and speeds along with a random to create unique wave shapes that fluctuate in amplitude. Then I'm using the attenuation to push each channel into varying degrees of the waveforms being sent to modulate pulse width modulation, filter cutoff, resonance, and the decay on my envelope. So this is a good start to getting wider movement into a basic voice patch that keeps the movement all in relationship to the source modulations. And we can make use of the inverted signals to gain other flavors of that relationship and send those modulations to other destinations or switch the destinations around for many tonal varieties on this example. This is clearly a more obvious approach to using a matrix mixer and is completely valid if that's what you're looking for. So here I have a joystick patched up to a couple of the channels to sweep the filter and resonance with these modulations as well as using VCAs to open up a little bit of vibrato essentially to the pitch. But is also affecting the resonance at the same time. Now let's explore mixing gate signals, as lately I have been having fun getting rhythms from sources other than my dedicated sequencers. And I've enjoyed the results as it gives quick variety to my patterns that can often feel too repetitive at times, even with probability and such. So it's a bit unconventional, but there's nothing stopping us from exploring it. So now I have this regular interval of clock division and I'll begin to add some different longer division intervals that are offset in phase to this regular interval. And I'll play with the phase of that offset or maybe just add more intervals with their own divisions and offsets so we can get anything from flam like effects to shuffle or just interesting rhythms in general. So this is just using the one output, and another output may be used to provide an accent or to trigger other drums in conjunction. 
with their own kind of rhythm that is also tied to some of these um, intervals. So you can see how this might be employed to a drum module like even say the Bessimala Cetera Desalter or in my case I'm using the Future Retro Transient to kind of shift the drum and give a unique rhythm to these triggers where the subtle attenuation of the gates can shift my sound over the loop. And there's just other possibilities here, obviously, that we could explore. You might say, for example, imagine using some of these gates to clock a traditional sequencer in a very stuttered fashion or glitch type rhythms where you can bleed in the different divisions and then pull them out. So for the next example, we're going to get into some complex FM patching. I'll start by utilizing some of the Rossum Electro Music Assimilator features and then move along and explore where that might take us. So to start, I've loaded up some waveforms on Assimilator and set them to loop to essentially give me a variety of oscillators with interesting wave shapes that are not exactly sine wave and they all have a unique tonal quality as you'll see here on the scope. So. I'll be using a fifth waveform as the carrier and these four waveforms as modulators to start us off. I've already set them all to respond to the same volt per octave signal and all of them to the same gate trigger. Also of importance is that they are the same tuning for the harmonic relationships to work and to be constant, though I could change the ratios of tuning and continue the new constant for more flavors, but for now I'll start basic. I can even play with the envelope settings for each waveform as I go to give us full-fledged operators. So now you can see I routed this one channel to my carrier, which is a mix of the modulators. And um, everything's down for the moment, but I've put it on the scope nice and big for us to follow visually. So there's our waveform. And I've got channel 1 routing my modulators to the FM input on the carrier, which I'll begin to add in now. So you can see in here there is a lot of activity to bring us a very rich harmonic profile and this is essentially one algorithm example of four modulators to one carrier. We've still only tapped one channel. So let's add some more complexity and I'll switch over to my Morpheus filter and route modulators to the frequency, morph, and transform to build on this tonal shaping. Here I'm using the clear water cube which has proven to be fairly interesting for me. I can use 
uh, the mixer to just kind of really subtly find those relationships of the modulators to the carrier as well as going to the filter. With my envelope settings, I can change a few more things and just kind of have those fade in and out with my simple attack and release. So there is a taste of using FM to a waveform and various filter controls to create deep worlds of sonic mayhem from a rather simple setup. And I'll continue that madness now by adding in the other matrix mixer with our basic LFO modulation waveform mixing. And I'll use that to subtly phase modulate the modulators by the modulator directly above it and listen to how our waveform evolves. <laughs> For some final tests using the feedback loops on a couple flavors of filters and delays to summon harsh noises or self-resonating frequencies that can be influenced with very gentle nudges. I have found that it really varies greatly on the module used and using the self-patching to induce oscillations into the feedback loop helps to conjure these sounds. The first feedback circuit will be on the all analog subcon voice tail filter using the high pass mode where I've had the better results compared to the low pass and band pass channels and this is with the resonance turned up and cut off in the low range to allow an open filter. It's like a very fuzzy square wave. It almost goes into triangle territory. All right, now I'll patch into the TG3 Gristalizer filter by Future Sound Systems, which is bandpass variety with a ton of character, and I'll need to play with some settings to find those sweet spots. <laughs> This is kind of nice, you know, you get these like almost water drop type pings with the matrix mixer in a slow oscillation that kind of clicks, but it's obviously something else a little bit different than what I just described that's actually happening. Okay, 
The first delay style is the Tip Top ZDSP with the Mariana Trench Card. Let's listen to another algorithm on this card. This is the unstable one algorithm. Let's go to one volt view. Okay, so we can see we're approximately a two volt peak to peak currently. So now I'll use the Strymon Magneto to give us a type echo flavor of this feedback loop and I'm using the regular audio ins and outs instead of the send and return path. And I'll spend a minute nudging this around, and this is already a fun one for um, obvious reasons. It has locking of the feedback loop and other various features with its transport control. And let's just go ahead and make sure our dry signal is down and our wet signal. I'm going to just slowly increase it. Okay, right there it's about at 9 o'clock, 9 or 10 o'clock for my wet signal and the speed pitch knob is at 12 o'clock so you can hear sweeping the speed pitch knob. I'll put it back at 12 and let's go ahead and see if we can find some tonal variety to this as well. That's quite nice. Now I think a lot of this is also has to do with the crinkle and wow and flutter settings, and the tape age. All those knobs kind of play a role on our overall sound here, so I'll just play with those for a second. Lastly, I'll give my Roland Demora a shot at this feedback and gently play its settings for a bit, which is interestingly the most creative one for me in terms of sonic tonal variety. I really enjoy the subtle undertones uh, with different levels adjusted from the matrix. And it seems mostly due to the width control playing a large factor on this, and I'll let you hear that now. This is just with my wet signal all the way up, my feedback all the way down. As I say, this one just tends to give me a lot more tonal variety as far as the delays go.
So now I'm going to get one last bit of crazy in here. And I'm going to throw this feedback signal from the Demora into the Sloppy Engineering 100 grit. And then I'm going to use its second input and its distortion output to do a feedback loop over on the other matrix mixer. And then I'm going to take the clean output of the 100 grit and throw that into Magneto. And we'll listen to its stereo return into my mixer. So let's go ahead and open up the wet signal on Magneto. And I'll just gently nudge the Demora width control. And so far my 100 grit filter is mostly closed off. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my resonance to be around 12 o'clock. Open that filter very subtly. Let's go ahead and do another self patch over here. Alright, so for my final thoughts, it's pretty clear why this is such a great tool. I will state my one and only small con of this module, though some may be fine with it, so it's more of a personal preference for that of the ergonomics with the knobs placed so tightly together, which makes it difficult to play full smooth sweeps. And it could potentially be a deal breaker if you don't like cramped spaces. But with that said, most general uses really lend to subtle adjustments anyways. And at the 12 HP, you're getting a very compact matrix mixer that is straightforward, easy to implement, and could be seen as a positive for those who look to maximize their constrained space with no menus. So perhaps it's a different strokes for different folks. For the pros, the knobs are very high quality and have practically zero wiggle to them. They are going to last forever it seems, and it's also a uh, what you see is what you get type of module, which is always a plus. So the knobs being packed together is honestly the only thing that I noticed initially, and after some use I began to accept it more and more, finding that it was a minor concern that is overshadowed by the sheer potential and functionality. So I'm literally going to struggle sending these modules back as part of the agreement for this review. It's exactly the type of utility that can make the fancy looking oscillators, filters, and effects all become so much more than just basic blocks that look fancy. It brings everything alive and moves it to the next level status. So yes, this utility definitely rocks. As I leave, I will play out this final patch, which is a little bit of an embodiment of all the examples that I've done here. And I thank you all for watching, and feel free to comment on how I'm doing, or give the thumbs up if any of this was useful for you. I wish you all well, and take care.